So now we wanted to take uh, a look on the shape in isotropy, so how the shape of the magnet influence on the preference of the magnetization direction for certain plane or certain uh, axis. So um, uh, shape in isotropy is uh, an isotropy which creates a favorable energy term for magnetization to be aligned along the long axis of a needle if you have a needle-like sample and uh, it creates an unfavorable term of uh, for magnetization to be along the uh, surface normal. So in this way uh, it will make some preference. So now uh, we will uh, look at uh, this example also. You can see here that the magnetization M is uh, aligned along uh, the needle direction and uh, field is applied along the needle direction. However, if the magnetization aligned perpendicular to it, then um, there is some other field HD which is a demagnetization field which will actually create um, an energy uh, which is the reason um, behind the energy term which uh, makes it unfavorable for magnetization to be perpendicular to the uh, surface normal. So if you consider bar magnet you can see that there are demagnetization field coming um, um, uh, outside uh, from the bar magnet which can be uh, seen if you have some iron particles around you can see the uh, how the fields are coming outside if you look the closer uh, look uh, to this bar magnet you can see that the magnetization is pointing uh, from right to the left however when um, you um, zoom in here it shows that the demagnetization fields are uh, um, pointing opposite to the uh, magnet, uh, op opposite to the magnetization of the power magnet. Similar situation can be seen if you have a um, uh, magnetic material, so applied field um, if it's from uh, right to the left direction, the magnetization field, uh, field will also be along uh, the same direction. However, the demagnetization fields will uh, act opposite to this. So now if we look mathematically, here is uh, the uh, demagnetization fields which will actually depend on uh, some demagnetization factors and magnetization and you can see that this uh, there is a minus sign. So uh, this um, energy will be um, large if the demagnetization fields are large and will be small if the demagnetization fields are small. So um, this uh, is actually literally the uh, demagnetization fields uh, in a certain volume. So if uh, um, we look further how the magnetos how this uh, magnetostatic energy which is playing a role in the shape in isotropy we can see that um, this has um, uh, a shape in isotropy constant and a sine squared theta dependence where theta is the angle between the uh, magnetization and the applied field direction and in this way we can uh, already uh, define uh, shape and isotropy constant which will be actually uh, for uh, a prolate sphere, uh, spheroid it is uh, going to be the difference of the demagnetization factors for two direction uh, multiplied by square of magnetization and um, in, in this case, we have considered that the easy axis is along the C axis and hard axis is along uh, the normal to see as uh, C axis is longer than the um, A axis. So um, for uh, a, a such a situation, instead of a, a spheroid, a thin film or a needle-like shape can also be considered and here you can see if the uh, uh, if uh, you have an uh, infinite um, film or an infinite needle and you look to this um, uh, one direction, you apply field, magnetization is within this uh, plane, you can look a small area to see how much demagnetization fields are coming uh, outside. You can, it would be very small, almost none, because you have considered it to be infinite. And then, if you look the other side, when you want to apply the magnetization out of plane, uh, you want to apply the field out of plane and magnetization to be aligned out of plane in this direction. You will have a very large demagnetization fields. 
uh, in this small area which is represented by hd and will act opposite to the applied magnetization so in this way if you calculate the uh, energy for the shape in isotropy you will see that the magnetization have um, an unfavorable uh, um, uh, term for the magnetization which uh, uh, for this configuration in the magnetization factor is large for this configuration however for the uh, si this situation in the left side the demagnetization factor is almost zero and this uh, will be more preferred so now if we look mathematically here is uh, the uh, demagnetization fields which will actually depend on uh, some demagnetization factors and magnetization and you can see that this uh, there is a minus sign so uh, this um, energy will be um, large if the demagnetization fields are large and will be small if the demagnetization fields are small so um, this uh, is actually literally the uh, demagnetization fields uh, in a certain volume so if uh, um we look further how the magnetos how this uh, magnetostatic energy which is playing a role in the shape in isotropy we can see that um, this has um, uh, a shape in isotropy constant and a sine square theta dependence where theta is the angle between the uh, magnetization and the applied field direction and in this way we can uh, already uh, define a uh, shape in isotropy constant which will be actually uh, for uh, a prolate sphere uh, spheroid it is uh, going to be the difference of the demagnetization factors for two direction uh, multiplied by square of magnetization and um, in in this case we have considered that the z axis along the c axis and hard axis is along uh, the normal to see as uh, c axis is longer than the um, a axis so um for uh, as in such a situation instead of a uh, spheroid a thin film or a needle like shape can also be considered and here you can see if the uh, uh, if uh, you have an uh, infinite um, film or an infinite needle and you look to this um, uh, one direction you apply field magnetization is within this uh, plane you can look a small area to see how much demagnetization fields are coming uh, outside you can it would be very small almost none because you have considered it to be infinite and then if you look the other side when you want to apply the magnetization out of plane uh, you want to apply the field out of plane and magnetization to be aligned out of plane in this direction you will have a very large demagnetization fields in this small area which is represented by hd and will act opposite to the applied magnetization so in this way if you calculate the uh, energy for the shape in isotropy you will see that the magnetization have um, an unfavorable uh, um, uh, term for the magnetization which uh, uh, for this configuration in the magnetization factor is large for this configuration however for the uh, si this situation in the left side the demagnetization factor is almost zero and this uh, will be more preferred so now if, if we look to an example um, again uh, which is a shape in isotropy constants for prolate a spheroid so it's not fully um, it's not a sphere with a b c equal to uh, each other but it's a spheroid with um, uh, a and b axis equal and c axis not equal as shown in this figure uh, in this situation you can see that we can define shape and isotropy constant um, by taking a difference of the uh, a and C uh, demagnetization factors because these two axes are not equivalent and the demagnetization factors for A, a and B axes are going to be the same. In this way we can define a shape anisotropy constant and as uh, C axis is longer than A and B axis so the magnetization is uh, going to have um, um, 
uh, CX is as an easy axis, however, um, A and B will be the hard axis. So now if we look uh, to the demagnetization factors, how they are for different shapes as the demagnetization factors are the one which will decide the demagnetization fields um, by multiplying with the magnetization M and this demagnetization fields are the one which uh, are used in the expression of uh, magnetostatic energies. So uh, if we uh, have uh, a proper idea of the demagnetization factors, we can calculate the shape anisotropies. So um, for uh, there is summary of some well-defined shapes. So you can see if you have uh, a cylinder type shape or long needle, the uh, magnetization parallel to the long axis um, will have demagnetization factor zero and uh, perpendicular to the long axis the magnetization will have a um, uh, factor will be half so uh, if the long axis is along uh, c axis or z axis then x and y both will have um, one by two demagnetization factors and as a sum uh, nx plus ny and plus nz is going to be one so if we talk about sphere sphere has all three direction equal so then you will have nx equal to ny equal to nz uh, equals to one by three and now if you talk about a thin film and parallel uh, so demagnetization factors if you want to take um, for the thin film um, and magnetization is parallel to the plane the demagnetization factor within this uh, plane is going to be zero and out of plane is going to be one so uh, the demagnetization energy will be very large for out of plane direction so this is also a reason for um, magnetization to be in plane in thin films so uh, if we talk about now ellipsoid and as we already discussed one of the example which was uh, pro prolate um, spheroid uh, or in this case an ellipsoid with, where all directions uh, are uh, not equal uh, so in this case you can have the demagnetization factors um, Na and Nb equal to each other because two dimensions are equal and Nc will be different and can be uh, determined from this expression. When uh, you are dealing with um, a magnetized object and you are studying its um, magnetization, you usually don't want to deal with the demagnetization factors and shape anisotropy. You want it more focus into other anisotropies. So um, if you uh, want to avoid the demagnetization factors, it's uh, best to apply field along the direction where the demagnetization um, factor is zero. Then you don't have to care about the um, demagnetization fields because it's going to be zero also. So your applied field is going to be what uh, is um, the field which doesn't need any correction of the de demagnetization fields here and then your external susceptibility and internal susceptibility defined by this relation is going to be the same but if that's not the case uh, the other situation is uh, taking a sphere sample then you don't have to care about the demagnetization factors because they are going to be equal in all three directions um, but if um, the sample has a certain shape um, like a thin film or a cylinder or a needle then one has to take care of the demagnetization factors if uh, the field is not applied along the direction where the demagnetization field is uh, demagnetization factor is zero so if um, we look a little bit uh, more here then if you are uh, having a needle like sample and you apply field uh, parallel to the long axis, you don't have to really care about the demagnetization factors. But if you apply field perpendicular to the long axis, you need to use some correction factors, uh, how it is shown here. So um, 
in some materials um, chapin isotropy dominates and in other and in some other materials magnetocrystalline isotropy dominates but to get a better picture one has to actually take care of um, shape of the sample as well as magnetocrystalline energies and then uh, get access to uh, anisotropy picture.